to Akshita's recipes and welcome if you're new here. So today's recipe is Guratsa Shira which is made with Jogri. Now you can use any Jogri that you have at hand which you use generally in your diet. And uh, don't forget to use the nutmeg as well as the cardamom or the elaichi powder also in this recipe. Watch the video till the end because I'll give you tips on how to make the nutmeg powder and the elaichi powder too. So let's get started with today's recipe. So let me take you through the ingredients. This is one wati of fine rava or semolina. Now if you don't have the fine rava or semolina, you can use the medium or the uh, thick one and just grind it in your mixer pot till it becomes nice and fine. Now this is one wati of jogri or ghoul. You can use any type of ghoul or jogri. This is three cups of water. Now I'm using this wati measure, but if you don't have watis, you can use the cup measure. So this is about half a cup of mixed dry fruit. So I have cashew nuts, almonds and kishmish or raisins. I'm going to be using a pinch of salt and about 10 teaspoons of ghee or clarified butter. Now this is half a teaspoon of elaichi or cardamom powder. That is, I've used three small green elaichis or cardamoms. And this is one fourth teaspoon of nutmeg or xiphal powder grated. So these are all the ingredients. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to first add the grated jogri or ghoul to my water. And we're just going to mix it. And then I'm going to put it onto, uh, so first give it a nice mix like this. Now I've grated the jogri just using, uh, you know, uh, a sharp knife. And now I'm just going to put it on a low to medium heat and I'm going to stir this till all of the jogri dissolves. And it comes to a gentle boil. Now turn off for the heat and now we're going to strain this liquid because sometimes the jogri does have a little bit of impurities. So give it a good strain. So now in my pan I've taken the rava and I'm going to dry roast the rava for at least 2 minutes on a low to medium flame stirring continuously till the rava gives a nice aroma and it turns a little light golden brown in color. Now once that is done, turn off the heat and transfer it to another pan or another bowl. And now with your clean dry kitchen napkin, just wipe out your pan. Now we're going to use the same pan in which I'm going to put 4 teaspoons of clarified butter or ghee. And now I'm going to add my dry fruits, that is the cashew nuts, the uh, almonds and the raisins or the kishmish. And I'm just going to lightly fry them till the cashew nuts and the almonds turn a little golden brown in color. So for say a half a minute or a minute. Now once that is done, just take off all the uh, fried dry fruits. And now I'm going to add another 4 teaspoons of clarified butter or ghee. And now I'm going to add the roasted semolina or the rava into the ghee and now we're going to fry this really well in the ghee. Now I'm going to add this zyphar powder or nutmeg powder as well as the cardamom or elaichi powder and again mix everything really really well together. I'm also going to add a pinch of salt, just a pinch. Fry this really really well. And now we're going to add this uh, jogri water. It's a little bit hot, so be careful. And once you add the water, do not stir at all, but just cover it immediately. And we're going to cook this on a low to medium heat for just half a minute. Now, after half a minute, you will see that everything has come together really well. And now we're going to stir it and you will see that it starts leaving the sides of the vessel and all comes together. So keep stirring it for another minute. Add the dry fruits back and mix everything really well together. So it's got a lovely color because of the jogri. Now if you use a darker jogri like a goa jogri or palm sugar jogri, you'll get a much darker color. So now mix it and we're going to cook this for at least another whole minute. Stirring well. And now what I like to do is I just like to add another two teaspoons of clarified butter. Then I turn off the flame and I just put the cover and let it cool down for another five minutes. And now it's all ready to serve our lovely gulats uh, uh, Shira is ready. So I've just taken a bowl. I've just greased the bowl a little with some clarified butter. 
just a little, a drop of clarified butter. And I'm just going to mix all of this shira nicely together. So then I'm going to fill this about three fourth of the size of the bowl. And then I'm going to press it down nicely. Don't forget to grease the bowl. That way the shira will come out nicely. Or if you have a mold, like an aluminium mold, then you can use that. And then just put it on the plate and it just slips off very easily. You can just pat it once or twice. And there it is. And then you can just garnish it with some nuts like I've done with some cashew nuts. And that's it, guys. Your lovely shira using jaggery is ready. And it is super, super delicious. So I hope you like today's recipe and I hope you will give it a try. So like I said for the nutmeg, I use this kind of a small grater. You can also use a cheese grater. So just grate about half a teaspoon of the nutmeg. And as far as the cardamom powder is concerned, I took three pods of cardamom or elaichi. I, uh, you know, depotted it. But don't throw, the way, don't throw away the pods, keep them. Because I like to put them in my tea when I'm boiling them in the morning. So when you're making your tea, just add this and it will give you a lovely elaichi flavor to your tea. And uh, then you just, uh, you know, in your mortar and pestle, just make a fine powder of the elaichi powder of the elaichi or the cardamom, and that is your elaichi powder. Also, don't forget to add the uh, chopped nuts, whatever nuts you have at home. Just ch chop them up and add them to this lovely shira. And like I said, you can use any jaggery for this uh, recipe. You don't have to stick to a particular type. Whatever you use at home. Let's see today's delicious recipe of moog dal halwa which is made out of jaggery and it gets ready also in no time. So here I've taken one cup of yellow moog dal, washed it thrice under water and I'm going to soak it for about two hours in about three cups of water. Now after two hours you're going to drain all the water out and you're going to grind this to a very very smooth paste. And it should look like this. So you don't need to add any water when grinding the paste. And transfer this to a bowl. Now in a pot, I'm going to add one cup of water. To that, I'm going to add one cup of grated gur or jaggery or gur. You can use any type of jaggery that you regularly use in your food and in your cooking. Stir it a bit. And then we're going to cook this on a low to medium flame till the, the jaggery or the ghoul completely dissolves. So this should take you about 2 to 3 minutes. You can stir it in between and it will dissolve and look like this. Now in a separate pan, I'm going to heat about half a cup of ghee. Now this moog dal does require a little bit more of ghee. Moog dal halwa. And now I'm going to add one tablespoon of semolina or rava. I like using the fine rava, but you can even use whatever rava you have, the thick or the medium. And I'm also going to add one tablespoon of besan or chickpea flour. Just stir the two together in the ghee. See that your ghee is nice and hot on a low to medium flame. And now we're going to grind this moog dal paste. We're going to add the moog dal paste rather. And I'm going to stir all the three ingredients really well for at least two to three minutes. We want all these three ingredients to get nicely cooked in the ghee. So keep stirring it and see that you mix everything together. And you will see that the moog dal immediately starts to absorb all of the ghee. Now I'm going to add one teaspoon of cardamom or elaichi powder. So I've taken three cardamom pods and I've uh, made a powder in my mortar and pestle. So ensure that you fry this in the ghee for two to three minutes. You can use a flat spatula like this. And now I'm going to strain this joggery a syrup that we prepared and add it to this fried mixture and keep stirring it and you will see that the consistency will immediately change from a lumpy consistency to a very very smooth consistency almost like a shira 
and keep on stirring it for another 2 to 3 minutes till it starts leaving the sides of the pan and then add some dry fruits and just cook it for another 2 to 3 minutes and that's it guys your lovely moog dal halwa is all ready and it's super delicious so do try out this recipe and let me know how you like this recipe thank you so much for joining me today i'll catch you in my next video this is akshata signing off
सो फ्रेंड्स लेट्स सी टुडे इज लवली गोवन क्यूकम्बर केक और ताउसिया छे मांडोस इट्स सुपर इजी नाउ हियर आई हैव टेकन वन कप ऑफ राइस वॉश्ड इट थ्राइस वेल अंडर वाटर एंड नाउ आई एम गोइंग टू सोक इट इन थ्री कप्स ऑफ वाटर फॉर टू आवर्स एट लीस्ट दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दैट यू सोक द राइस फॉर टू आवर्स सो जस्ट कवर इट एंड सेट इट असाइड Now I've taken uh, f- uh, four medium cucumbers. I'm just showing you two, but I've taken four medium cucumbers. Washed them really well, and I've also peeled them. Then I've cut off the tips and do a taste test. And if the cucumbers are bitter, then please discard them. And now we're going to cut them lengthwise like this. And with a spoon, I'm just going to scoop out all of the center, that is the seeds, etc. We're not going to use that. so you can uh, you know put this in your plants etc don't i mean don't throw it into the garbage you can put it in your plants just a small tip here and then i'm just going to roughly chop up the cucumbers and i should get about 1 cup of these chopped cucumbers now you can use any cucumbers i got my hands on these otherwise you can use the dark green ones or whatever you're really used to using and now once i've done that i'm going to add the cucumbers to a mixer jar along with 1 cup of desiccated coconut now you can also substitute it with fresh coconut i like the taste of the desiccated coconut in this cake so i'm using that and now i'm just going to grind that to a very fine paste now after 2 hours the rice has nicely got soaked so i'm going to drain out all the excess water and i'm going to add this to my mixer jar and i'm also going to be adding One cup of grated jaggery. Now you can use any jaggery, the Goa jaggery or the light, uh, you know, uh, coloured jaggery, whatever you have at hand. And I'm going to just add about one fourth cup of water to help the grinding process. And we're going to grind this to a very, very smooth and fine paste like this. So you can transfer that to a bowl too. And now we're going to make the batter for this cucumber cake. So into a large bowl, I'm going to add both of these pastes that we ground just now. To that, I'm going to add half a cup of clarified butter or ghee. So I've just melted the butter, the clarified butter. Now, in the meantime, just preheat your oven to 180 degrees Celsius for 10 minutes. Now I'm going to add one teaspoon of elaichi powder or cardamom powder, as well as about 10 to 12 chopped up cashew nuts. and now you just have to mix everything really well together to get a nice batter mix this well so that the elaichi or the cardamom powder also gets nicely mixed up with the rest of the ingredients and now i've just lined my cake tin with some butter paper and i'm going to pour the batter into this cake tin now this is a 7 by 7 round cake tin then just give it a gentle tap and now you're going to put it in your preheated oven and bake it at 180 degrees celsius for 45 minutes now after 45 minutes we're just going to do the te- test to see whether the cake is ready so i'm just going to insert a knife into the cake and if it comes out clean that means it's ready if yours doesn't come out clean just put it back into the oven and bake it for about another 5 to 10 minutes and once the cake is at room temperature we're going to demold it take off the uh, butter paper and i'm just going to turn it over to the right side and there your beautiful cucumber cake is ready so now i'm just going to decorate it with some cashew nuts so i've just taken the cashew nut cut them into halves like this and decorated the cake you remember we also have cashew nuts in the cake so it makes it all the more better <laughs> And that's it guys your lovely cucumber cake is all ready so just dig in and enjoy
everyone and welcome back to Akshita's recipes. Thank you so much for joining me today. So today I've come up with a new recipe of sweet potato kheer which is really really delicious and very healthy too. So we're not going to be using any sugar in this recipe and it's super delicious. So let's start with the video, uh, the recipe and join me at the end of the recipe because I have a few important tips for this recipe so that you get it perfect and all the other alternatives you can use in the recipe. So let's jump into the recipe and meet me after the recipe. easy recipe and looks really delicious and something you would really want to try. Now not everyone is a fan of sweet potato but sweet potato is really healthy. It's also good for weight loss. Instead, you know if you if you like potatoes and you're not eating I mean, you, you cannot eat potatoes because of you know uh, its health reasons then sweet potato would be a good alternative. Also uh, you know uh, I'm not using any sugar in this recipe so again it's a healthy recipe I'm substituting it with gool or jaggery or jaggery as some of you say and uh, also I am using uh, milk which is coconut milk. 
now instead of coconut milk you can also use regular milk you know if you don't want to go through the process of making the coconut milk uh, you can use regular milk you can also use another shortcut which sometimes i do use when i'm in a hurry to make something and that is using uh, coconut milk powder so you get these small sachets you know of coconut milk powder you just use that with hot water and your coconut milk is ready so that's really an easy alternative uh, rather than you know going through the gruesome uh, process of grinding the coconut and extracting the milk i mean if you have all the time in the world and you have that much patience you can do it but otherwise this is the easiest method you know to use coconut milk powder and uh, you know you can also use regular milk like i said or almond milk or whatever milk you generally use when uh, making your desserts and you've seen i've used turmeric uh, leaves that's because i have turmeric leaves growing in my uh, window garden but if you don't have turmeric leaves it's okay you can skip it out but now during the monsoon season you do get turmeric uh, leaves you know easily available in the market and they're really very 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 uh, you know reasonable like you get about 5 big leaves for about 10 rupees so that is you know if you you can access it then it's great because this turmeric leaf adds a beautiful flavor a very light and subtle but really beautiful flavor to this kheer so if you can get your hands on it there's nothing like it but uh, if you don't have it it's fine you can skip it and thank you again and take care of yourselves uh, you know take care be healthy stay fit uh, and be loving and kind to one another and i'll catch you soon in my next recipe sooner than you think this is akshita signing off lots of love bye